Today, I want to talk to you about a high limit credit card that pulls TransUnion. How do you get one with fair credit? It's very important, you know, so you're just sitting there, you want a, a high limit credit card that pulls TransUnion and you have fair credit, you have average credit. You want to listen to this conversation because uh, I'm going to spill all the beans that you need to hear to actually qualify. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about a high-limit credit card that pulls TransUnion. How do you get one with fair credit? Okay, here are the steps I want you to follow, boss. I want you to really pay attention here. So, first, we need to have a clear idea about what we're talking about. You need to check your TransUnion score and make sure it is accurate. This is important. You you want to be very specific here. We not really uh, we we want to focus on TransUnion to make sure that we have a an accurate score. This is really important. And the cool thing is you can actually get a free credit score from a TransUnion actually once a year or whenever you apply for credit and you get denied. Okay, you have to go to annualcreditreport.com. There is a website that is federally that's uh, federally uh, mandating the uh, availability of credit uh, credit reports to you. Okay, so once a year or whenever you get denied. Okay, so this is really important. So you're you have to. So once you go to a annualcreditreport.com, you can actually check what's in there. What's what's in your TransUnion credit score. This is important. You can actually understand what your credit score is made up is made up of. Okay, made up of. You can understand how the score is calculated. Okay, what effect what actually affects your credit score the most in terms of your payment history? Very important. Your payment history and also your CUR, your credit utilization ratio. This is important. Also, your credit mix also is important in terms of uh, affecting your credit score. And the thing here, the one thing you need to understand is that your TransUnion credit score may not be the same as your score with Equifax or Experian, because every credit bureau actually has they are they have their own algorithm they have their own um i would say uh computing models that will actually give a score but this really should not be a problem as long as you have a clear idea what it's in your transunion credit score you should be good to go it is important because you're um you want a high limit credit card that pulls transunion that that pulls transunion primarily right i mean they can actually they can look for your faco score with other bureaus but they pull transunion Primarily, so you, you need to have a clear idea of what's in your TransUnion credit score. And if you find issues or some inaccuracies, whatever, you want to systematically and reflexively file dispute letters. This is important. You need to file a dispute. Okay. Very important. The second step is you need to take care of your other FICO scores. So TransUnion is the primary scores that we want to focus. We want to focus on here. But you got to have a clear idea also what, what uh, what's in uh, Equifax or Experian, because remember, if you just uh, happen upon a bank or a credit union that wants to pull TransUnion primarily, but also pulls other um, other CRAs secondarily, you might be in trouble if you have an issue with if you have a derogatory item that is unsolved on uh, your Equifax or Experian credit bureau on your spear and credit score so this is really important that you need to have a clear idea what's in there okay the cool thing is you can get your FICO score for free actually you don't have to pay for it I mean I spoke to you about annualcreditreport.com that's that's something that's available but you can also sign up for other services yeah for example you can get your FICO score for free through uh, a couple of institutions and the cool thing is you don't have to be a member you don't have to be a card holder you don't have to have any sort of a relationship with them to qualify for that for example you have credit karma which is uh, really it gives you a free access to your score you have a nerd wallet you have a wallet hub okay 
those players they usually just get your data and they will push some kind of ads to you some kind of uh, solicitations for credit cards or, or loans whatever but as long as you're fine you don't click on it you don't apply you're fine okay but they make money through their business model is based on uh, advertising you know pushing some uh, credit products to you so besides those three credit the credit karma nerd wallet wallet hub you also have discover the discover credit scorecard oh yeah yeah discover credit scorecard is great i mean they give you access uh, to your to your faculty credit score for free you don't have to have a relationship with discover card okay the program is free whether you are a discover customer or not this is what we love with this thing you also have american express credit cards this you need to have a relationship with them but once you do have a relationship with them you have access to your FICO score for free okay just if you, you have Citibank credit cards you have a Bank of America you have most credit unions will give you access to your credit cards for free or to your credit reports for free okay a lie bank okay so the what, what I'm trying to tell you here is that you have a, a large constellation of places where you can get your FICO score for free your FICO scores for free from Experian and Equ Equifax obviously you want to spend 75 percent of your time on your your TransUnion credit score, but you want to spend also 25% of your time on your Experian and Equifax. Just to just you just want to make sure that you cover all bases. You never know, you know, in case there are issues with uh, your Experian or Equif or Equifax credit reports and scores. At least you have a chance to actually fix them. The third thing I want you to do is you need to actually uh, you need to uh, filter you need to zero in on the issuers that pull TransUnion. We're talking about the credit card issuers that pull exclusively or primarily TransUnion. Okay, and you have a you have a large constellation of uh, institutions, but I'm going to just talk about a few of them here. So you have Navy Fed. So with Navy Fed, you have access to. Uh, a large catalog of credit cards okay you have navy federal cash rewards you have navy federal visa signature flagship rewards you have navy federal credit union platinum you have navy federal credit union go rewards you have navy federal credit union more rewards amex from american express so the first institution that pulls uh, transunion is navy fed okay Besides Navy Fed, you also have U.S. Bank. So U.S. Bank also pulls TransUnion primarily. So you have, in terms of credit cards that, that this institution offers, you have U.S. Bank Cash Plus Visa Signature Card. You have U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve Card. You have U.S. Bank Visa Platinum Card. You have U.S. Bank Altitude Go Visa Card. You also have Regions Bank that pulls TransUnion also. And in terms of uh, Regions Bank, they have a lot of uh, interesting credit cards. They have Regions Cash Rewards Visa Credit Card. They have Regions Life Visa Credit Card. They have Regions Premium Visa Signature Credit Card. And they have Regions Explore Visa Credit Card. And you also have a few uh, institutions that actually pull TransUnion. I'm not just going to go through all the credit all the credit cards that they offer. I'm just going to give you some institutions that pull TransUnion, so you have a clear idea. And if you are interested, if you qualify for for membership, because some some of, some of these are credit unions, and you need to qualify for membership. If you qualify, you can just go on their website and see what kind of credit cards they have. Okay, so you have Synchrony. You have Consumers Credit Union. You have a BECU, the Boeing Employees the Credit Union. So you have Alliance. You have Teachers FCU, Teachers Federal Credit Union. And you have Lake Michigan. So those are, this is a non-exhaustive list of uh, financial institutions that pull TransUnion. The fourth thing I want you to do, boss, is you need to uh, check eligibility criteria for the top credit card providers that you have chosen. It's very important, okay? Eligibility is really important. So, the, you know, you, generally you have uh, 
a few factors so you have age you got to be at least 18 years old of, of age okay i mean some credit unions have a minimum requirements of 21 years and some banks also so you really want to uh, check the, uh, the eligibility criteria for the bank that you have chosen your annual salary very important okay it really depends we've seen minimum of 10 10 grand a year gross income for banks and credit unions to actually qualify you okay you have to also have uh, your nationality or res uh, residential status so citizens residents and non-residents can apply okay however there are a few cars that are only available for for uh, some uh, for, for u.s citizens so you have to be very clear about your relationship your uh, your situation in this state to actually qualify okay and there are some factors that affect your credit card eligibility we're talking about your credit score okay your existing debt your employment your location remember we are talking about a high limit credit card that pulls transunion okay and if you want to get it you have to take care of your existing debt you got to take care of your employment you got to take care of your look you got to take care of your credit score this is really really important okay and the one thing i want to say also is that there are a few documents that are required for a credit card application so you want to have the completed application form okay and you might want to have some id you might want to have a proof of identity okay and you might have to provide proof of a residence some credit card issuers want you to have a utility bills or your uh, your um, driving license or whatever they want to see your pay stubs also okay this is really important and in some cases they might want to have a a, a clear copy of uh, your bank statements one thing i want to say here is that you always want to apply for a credit card with an institution you currently have a relationship with it makes things a lot easier they have your records already they they've seen your your your, your cash inflows and cash outflows especially if you have to write the deposit with the institution that's kind of cool this is really cool okay and this is something you want to systematically and reflexively do what i'm trying to say is you got to have a plan and you got to follow that plan okay so understand your your transunion score you want to check out your other uh, you want to check out your Experian and equifax score also you want to actually filter the card issuers that pull transunion you want to seek your eligibility next thing you need to do is you need to establish a relationship with the institution that you have chosen yeah I know I've said this before, but I want to really, I really want to drill this into you right now. It's, it's important. A multi-product relationship. Okay. Choose a card issuer that pulls TransUnion and build a relationship with them. I'm not just talking about a tiny ass relationship. I'm talking about a solid, deep, long-term relationship. Okay. Obviously, you don't, you don't want just to open an account and apply for a credit card right away. No. Okay. You want to wait three to six months you want to uh, establish yourself you want to you want to get a chance to uh beef up your relationship with them in terms of uh, opening a checking account you want to open a savings account at least those two we always say this on all our shows it's important to have at least two accounts if you want to strengthen your relationship with uh with any bank or credit union you need to have more than one account okay and if you have more money and you want to park into you can open a cd a certificate of deposit this is kind of cool also because uh, it helps you actually uh, you know have some extra cash just in case just in case you never know okay you can also explore money market accounts this could be a possibility okay and iras also are, are kind of good so depending on the institution you you've chosen you really need to uh, to beef up your relationship with them now let me give you a few pro tips that we have seen in and out time and again work for a lot of folks for the last 30 years you you need to actually start your relationship at the branch you want to actually go to a branch you want to uh, talk to someone you want to ask them all questions about uh, their credit products in other words as you're opening checking a checking account and a savings account you want to talk to a rep about their credit products not just credit cards this could be a line of lines of credit this could be loans Okay, you're just collecting intel. You need to gather intel because uh, what, what will happen here is that as you build up your relationship with them and as you need a high limit credit card, then you you want to apply at a branch. And it's always cool, it's always cool if you have already established that relationship, you've already had that first time impression, a positive impression with uh, a rep at the branch, 
Okay, this is important. And the thing here is that we always say that credit is a relationship process. People believe that you can just wake up and because you have a high FICO score and you're making some money, you can actually just get approved for a credit card or, or a loan or line of credit. Yes, you could be, but most most of the times it's all about establishing a relationship. It is a human affair. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about um, high limit credit cards that pull TransUnion. How do you get one fast with fair credit? Okay, you need to talk about your job history. You need to take care of that because it's important for the credit card issuer to know that you have a solid, a stable job history. Okay, and card issuers evaluate your employment based on your job history and also your income. This is where I was just talking to you earlier about uh, when you establish your relationship with uh, the card issuer, make sure that you have direct deposit. That way they can send it, they can actually see how much money you're making, how, how often you're paid and who your employer is. This trifecta is really important. Okay. And they pay attention to your employment history. In other words, you know, lenders wants to see maybe uh, two years of employment or three years of employment. But if you have six months or three months or one month, it is still possible to get qualified for a credit card. You just have to have the right amount, the right uh, salary with them, okay? And also have the right deposit. The right deposit is really important. It is quite essential, okay? So, and also, by the way, if you are self-employed, okay? And you can also actually uh, prove your job history by through the deposit you're, that you're making, okay? In other words, you have uh, your 1099s. In that case, you want to uh, actually show the card issuer your uh, 1099s and also your tax returns because if you have if you are a sole proprietorship you don't have a, a w-2 you don't have a regular pay stub or you don't have a you're not paid every two weeks okay or every month for that matter but there are ways you can actually prove that uh, you are actually uh, you are making money because that's the bottom line you need to explain how you make money how do you make money Okay, if you are a traditional salaried employee who gets a W-2 tax form every year, I mean, you, you will have a much easier time verifying your income. But for other less stable income, lenders and credit card issuers usually need to see at least a two-year history. And this could be your tax returns. This could be your bank statements for that matter. Okay, but the bottom line is if you have the right relationship with a card issuer, if, in other words, he, uh, if you have a a checking accounts and a savings accounts with them they see your cash inflows and cash outflows so they can actually estimate what kind of uh, what kind of a credit worthy applicants you are okay the last thing i want you to pay attention to boss if you are trying to uh, get a high limit credit card that pulls transunion and you're trying to get uh, a high limit credit card fast you gotta think you gotta really think about your liquidity oh yeah boy i'm telling you, you gotta increase your cash flows okay it's not just about how much you're making it's about how much you have as disposable income in disposable income you know the funny thing is people make half a million a year and they just uh, realize that they're broke they have no cash to pay for groceries or whatever okay it's not about how much you're making it's about how much you're spending also if you're making a lot of cash but you're spending a lot of cash well you know you know the drill it's 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 always about the delta between your expenses uh, between your income and your expenses that's what we call your disposable income okay and there are a lot of ways so you want to be in a situation where you constantly increase your cash flows and you constantly reduce your uh, cash outflows okay the inflows must be more than your outflows okay in other words you want to actually live within your means you want to you actually want to lower your DTI, your debt to income ratio, boss. Are you listening to me here? I'm I'm very serious about this. Okay, we got we got to be in a situation where we have to live within our means. We have to boost our income. I mean, boost boost income means what? Well, find a find a side gig or something to do uh, from you know on the weekend or something to do at home, trying to bring extra paper into into the family's coffers. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, whatever you have to do, you have to do it. It's just what it is. You want to cut your expenses. Okay, I mean, you know, start cooking at home. I mean, what's up with that? Always ordering, you know, you have Uber Eats, or you have Grubhub, you have DoorDash. You, you're you using your card all the time and just, no, no, no. Hey, hey, stop doing that. I mean, you can do it once in a while, but don't be in a situation where you're just constantly buying, you constantly uh, dining out. No, cook at home. Find ways to reduce your expenses. Okay, I'm not trying to, I'm not picking on uh, Uber Eats and Grubhub and, uh, and DoorDash. I use them all the time myself. But you have to be in a situation where you cut your expenses, whatever expenses you can cut, if it is in food or whatever, or, or, or traveling or whatever, try to find that. Pay off your existing debts with whatever extra cash you have. Okay, so, and you can always refinance your, your, your debt if possible. Okay, and you need to be in a situation where you plan for infrequent recurring expenses some expenses are recurring but they are also infrequent the thing here is that you need to have a budget so you have a clear idea of those expenses that actually pop up once in a while or those that pop up periodically thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it i was just talking to you about high limit credit card that pulls transunion how do you get a high limit credit card okay we spoke about your TransUnion credit score, your regular FICO scores, the card issuers, eligibility, NPR, job history, and liquidity. Thank you so much for your attention. I will speak to you another time, but until then, remember, stay marvelous.